Hello and welcome to video 3 of the event day management video series. In video 2 we discussed removing bids, locking and unlocking participants, the SAP Ariba review, and line item value restrictions. In video 3 we'll be talking about message board functionality and how suppliers can send messages to the event owner. And we'll also be discussing surrogate bids and when it's an appropriate time to do so. Let's begin. The first thing that we'll be discussing are messages and the message board functionality, as well as how buyers and suppliers can send messages back and forth. In order to find your message board, all you'll do is scroll to the top tab and choose messages, and your message board will open. Your message board contains information pertaining to things such as when the event was published, when supplier invitations have gone out, if there was any announcements, as well as any timing notifications such as when the event was paused and then resumed. We also have the availability to click and then view any messages that were sent. For example, we have a welcome message here and we selected that and we can view what the details are of that message. We can see that the buyer has sent out a message to let us know that our suppliers can begin submitting their responses anytime that they would like. And let me show you what it would look like from the supplier's point of view to receive this message. Here we are viewing the event from the supplier's point of view. If the supplier wants to find any messages for the event, what they'll do is scroll up to event messages here and click. And in their message board, we notice that there are slightly less notifications than the buyer had on their side. That's because suppliers won't get notifications about other invitations being sent out to different suppliers. They'll still get notifications such as the welcome message and when the event has been paused and then resumed, but like I mentioned, they won't see other suppliers being invited. Suppliers have two ways to reply to any messages that were sent to either the group or them personally. They can either click the message here and then choose to reply, or they can choose to view it first to see the full detail of the message, and then choose reply over here and then can craft our message and reply. Now back in the event, we can see that we have a new message from one of our suppliers. Messages can contain attachments and we can see that here by the attachments icon. If we click the drop down, we have the option to view the attachment directly or we can click view to go into the message and read the message in greater detail. As we can see, the attachment is also here for easy viewing and in this instance, this supplier needs someone to bid on their behalf as their chief seller is currently experiencing a medical emergency. This is one of the instances in which a surrogate bid would be appropriate. We can reply and let them know that we will surrogate bid on their behalf. Now that our message has been typed, we can go ahead and send. Now that we have explicit confirmation from our supplier to surrogate bid on their behalf, let me show you how to do so. You'll first need to be in the suppliers tab. You'll then need to find the supplier for which you'll need to surrogate bid for. So we'll click the box next to their name and then choose the option to surrogate bid. Whenever we choose the surrogate bid as the supplier, we're brought to a screen that is very similar to the supplier's Ariba network login. Here, we have the option to view event messages just as the supplier would, as well as other information about the event. We'll need to click review prerequisites. And here we are seeing the bidder agreement, which all suppliers must agree to in order to bid for the event. So we'll go ahead and accept the terms of this agreement and choose OK. And then we'll get a notification to let us know to submit this agreement and click OK to submit. Once we click OK and submit the bidder agreement, we'll need to decide which lots or line items we'll want to bid on. In this case, there's only one. So we'll check the box and choose confirm selected lots. Once we select our lot, it then opens and we have the option to surrogate bid on the supplier's behalf. Here we can input our price for our total quantity of 40 and we'll input a price of $35 and then go ahead and choose submit entire response. We'll get a notification to submit this response and choose OK. And now we have a notification that our response has been submitted. We can then go and choose stop acting as the supplier. And if we jump back to our event here, we can see that our surrogate bid for our supplier has gone through. We can see the price submission along with the time submission. And if we would like to verify this activity, we can visit the log where we can see activity that has gone on throughout the event. And the most recent activity, we can see that a bid on the behalf of our supplier was placed. And this clearly identifies that it was a surrogate bid and not quite a normal bid. 
back in the bid console, we can see that two of the suppliers have responded to this event, however the last two are yet to respond. To find more information about the intent of these suppliers, you can either visit the Log tab or the Suppliers tab. Whenever we visit the Suppliers tab, of course we see the suppliers that are available for the event, and we also see information to the right. The key piece of information here is the status. The status under the two participants that have submitted the responses is participated. However, the other two have declined agreement and declined to respond. In these instances, it may be appropriate to lock these participants. Locking the participants will give them limited access to the event and they won't be able to submit responses. Although they cannot submit their responses, they can still use the event messages tab and send messages to the event owner to let them know if they've changed their mind and have intent to respond. In order to lock these participants, all we've done is selected the boxes next to their name and choose lock. And now we see that their lock status will change to yes here over next to status. This indicates that they have been locked and they cannot submit their responses. Thank you very much for watching video 3 of the Event Day Management video series. We hope that you'll join us again for video 4.